Hello, I'm Jonathan Mann. I am the editor of the Collected Poems of Anthony Burgess. I'm originally from Eastern Leeds, but now live in London, and I currently work at the University of East London. I've been writing my introduction to Burgess and editing his work for something in the region of five years, but the uh, the work that that builds on has been in existence for about 17 or 18 years. So this has been a long time coming, this book, and I'm looking forward to, to launching it with Carcanet. My current favourite place to work is where I am right now. This is my study. Um, it's also my music room. It's also the place where suddenly after lockdown, it also became an office. It also became an extension of my time on campus. So this is the place where I find myself most days these days. Uh, before that, I think probably one of my favourite places to work was the British Library. Um, the larger reading rooms um, are especially um, atmospheric for me. I find them very, um, very pleasurable places to work. I always like the idea that so many people are working on so many new things um, in, in the room under one roof. I always find that very exciting. Sadly, I don't get that here because uh, it's really just me uh, with my partner, Katie, um, occasionally coming in and, 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 and I'll move and so on and so forth. But it's it's we're adjusting. We're adjusting, I think, to uh, to to these to these new ways of working. And um, I think we make it work so far. The last book I read that really blew me away was this Quarry by Catherine Graham, a Canadian writer. And um, before she wrote this novel, this wonderful novel, um, she's all she also established herself as a as a as a very varied and very um, emotionally fraught um, writer of poetry, or should I say, a writer of emotionally fraught and strangely pagan poetry. And uh, these are um, themes that pop up in this book, which is about um, a, a young child experiencing loss and grief and dealing with um, with becoming um, an adult and that transition into adulthood um, in, in the face of trauma and grief. And this is an extraordinarily um, beautifully written novel um, with a really um, surprising structure and a really remarkable range of imagery um, and I can't recommend this novel enough. Um, yeah, so that's Quarry by Catherine Graham. How did it feel putting this new selection together? Um, it felt tiring uh, is the quick answer to that one. This is a very labour intensive work um, and it's the fruits of lots of sweat, some tears, the occasional bit of blood from chewed fingernails. Um, and there's a, there's been a lot of work required, so I've, I've, um, my carbon footprint has been pretty high for this book, unfortunately, because uh, it required me to uh, to visit pla various places in the globe, to uh, around the globe, to uh, to bring it together. Um, but it felt good, in essence. It feels good getting it together. It feels good being in a position now to to uh, release it to the world, and I I, 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 I happily send it forth. Um, it felt to me as though I was pursuing Burgess in in many ways through through the um, through the manuscripts and through my archival selections, and one of the wonderful um, and perhaps unexpected parts for me, um, unexpected joys for me from this process was um, smelling Burgess. I could smell cigar smoke on the manuscripts and seeing Burgess I could see his doodles his ink doodles to see the mess that he made of his manuscripts I was able to um, sometimes see some gory details there was blood from his uh, from his later illness on, on a manuscript pretty horrifying to, to inspect and see but at the same time somehow extraordinarily fascinating um, the manuscripts themselves are incredible um, incredible documents not just the material they contain the original uh, writings but the um the material around those writings the state of the manuscripts the sometimes chaotic ways in which burgess wrote and rewrote and edited his works it's an absolutely extraordinarily um insightful way to get to know an author to to understand the way that they work in print and um in ink and to, to 
for, sort of feel your way around the manuscripts and look at the impression of the words, the actual impression of the words coming from the weight of the author's hand muscles and the imprint. It's a very wonderfully visceral experience. And I, I felt really excited to be in amongst this material and, and, and getting closer every time to Burgess. And Burgess was an extraordinarily prolific writer. And that's something I knew before I started this process. But it's something I came to very much understand um, through dealing with variant manuscripts, and dealing with selections and looking at um, how I was going to develop those selections and trying to understand what goes in and what doesn't go in. Because it was so complicated. It was a, it has been a very complicated um, piece of work um, and hopefully uh, readers will find that the way it's been shaped is is uh, fairly straightforward fairly logical hopefully fairly logical um, and yeah I feel as though it's been a process of taking uh, some wonderful wonderfully chaotic um, manuscripts and documents and chopping them together and forming them into a logical hopefully logical, rational document. And that's why I've provided lots of uh, end notes at the end of the, um, at the end of the book. And I've um, done my best to, um, to provide an account of the way that Burgess writes and the way that I've made my selections and the way that the book's intended to operate. So hopefully readers will find that valuable in, um, in this selection. Do I have a favourite piece in the new collection? I think that would do the collection a little bit of injustice if I was to select one and say that's my favourite because my intention with the uh, collection is to to let readers decide um, to to show each each um, part of, of Burgess's poetry, each style, each form, um, to try and give it some form of equal presentation so that readers can make those selections themselves and hopefully the. Um, the additional notes that I've provided will, will help with that process. But there is a piece that stands out to me, um, not necessarily because it's my absolute favourite, but because of the processes I followed and, and the, the work it caused me, frankly. And that's why it's going to stick with me. And that's Moses, which, um, which hasn't been published for quite a while. In fact, uh, the early 70s, here's, here's the Stonehill edition. Um, as you can see, it's quite a um, quite a bulky edition just in the standalone um, book there. Um, in the collected poems, I've uh, selected two forewords, one previously unpublished, one um, older, one that has that was previously published. Um, and the work is, um, I think it's 86,000 words long. So it makes up quite a, a lot of the book, but it doesn't make up all of the book. And it doesn't make up, um, I think it, it's perhaps something like a quarter of the book. Um, so it, it, even though it's a large standalone um, epic poem, even though it's that, it doesn't really um, take away from the weight of the, the, the other um, poems. And I think that's what's interesting about Burgess. I think, I think this, this poem... Um, for all its expansiveness and for all its um, astonishing displays of biblical knowledge and for, for all its um, humongous selection of, of imagery and, um, and all that, for all that, it doesn't really diminish, from, uh, diminish the other poems either. Um, but it reminds me that so much work, so much labour, so much enterprise and planning and structuring went into the original work. And for me, just simply following the, the manuscript was surely um, less complicated, um, less labour intensive than Burgess's original process of writing the thing. So um, I learned a lot about Burgess's staying power through, through, through the Moses manuscript, but I also learned a lot about my own staying power. It took me a long time to transcribe that poem, and it took me a long time to get it into a, um, a format that I thought might be suitable for publication. And then I had a lot of very good help in, um, in making sure that it was um, as correct and as representative as possible. Um, so, yeah, it's been a kind of a joint enterprise, really. Um, but that poem for me is probably the most... Um, the one that will have the most memories for me as, as an editor. 
Um, so, so that's it. Um, so, in summary, um, I hope readers enjoy the collection. Um, I hope it allows them the opportunity to make informed decisions about the poems, to, to decide on their own terms um, what status Burgess occupies as a poet. Um, I put forward some suggestions, but um, of course, um, I think it's it's only part of a, an ongoing dialogue, and I've done my best to show um, the other debates around Burgess, um, such as they exist. Um, so yeah, I very much hope um, it's it's a book that is of use to people in understanding Burgess, and um, and I um, hope it um, hope it helps people as scholars but also as readers so um, i will leave it there thank you bye